In this video, I'm going to share three spots in your house that you could start decluttering today that could be pretty easy spots for you to tackle because they are not usually spots in our house that we have any emotional or sentimental clutter. The first one's the entryway. Let's go. Welcome to the channel. My name is Erica Lucas and this is our entryway. <laughs> uh, kids' shoes and kids' coats and stuff and then their school pictures from this year. Also on the floor today, we have dogs' toys, uh, a necklace and some trash because that's real life at the entryway of our house. First things first, empty it out, get it out of there, clean it up and then put it back together. But when you put it back together, make different decisions. Don't make decisions as you're emptying it out. Just pull it out. Don't decide if you're going to keep it when you take it off the hook. Just get it out of the space. Make decisions about what you're going to keep when you put things back and then let everything else shake itself out. Is it for donation? Is it trash? What is it? When you're tackling the entryway and you take everything out, maybe you have hooks, maybe it's a closet, maybe you don't have any organization whatsoever. It's just sort of a dumping ground for backpacks and coats. As you decide what you're going to keep in this space and put back, think about whether some extra hooks would help keep things off the floor and organize things better for you. When you're putting it back together and deciding what to keep, is it visually calm or is it gonna cause you some stress? What do you need to organize here to make it look better and feel better and function better as an entryway? And I definitely recommend starting with what you have. Use baskets or even grocery bags that you have to organize things together to decide how you want it to function. All I did was kind of move it in the hallway and then threw an inordinate amount of coats and sweatshirts. That's not all going back on there. Evaluate everything that's hanging around that you didn't choose to keep. This is called reverse decluttering. When you decide what you want to keep before you decide what you want to declutter. By deciding what you want to keep first, you are prioritizing the things you use, need, love, and want. And it helps you visually see what you didn't use, need, love, or want, what you didn't pick, and really face the truth and be kind of ruthless and honest with yourself about the items you did not choose to keep in that space. This fish belongs in the fidget kit in the family room. One pink glove belongs in my daughter's bedroom. Sneakers on top when they really do belong in here. Okay, quick glance, I already know these shoes are all fine shoes for the kids. Um, I could probably stand to dust that shelf. That's for a different day. Okay, um, these two things, they don't belong here. The idea behind this was that it was like tissues and sunglasses and ponytail holders and things that the kids would wanna grab to get out of the house. Nobody uses that. Okay, I'm just gonna put it to the side because I'm not going to let it derail my productivity. This is the spot for more trash. This is the spot for library books that need to go back to the library. This is our checklist binder to get out of the house. The kids all have checklists for their activities. Nobody actually uses this anymore because they're so ingrained in their routines and know exactly what they need to do to get out of the house. We use this for probably a solid year before that took effect, before they were like, yep, I packed my backpack, I got my water bottle, I have all my gear, I have whatever. Nobody references this anymore. I am going to put this in our storage closet upstairs. I kind of have a dumping ground of things. Should I declutter this? Maybe. Here's why I'm not. I like this size binder and I like this kind of binder. So I, I might wanna use this binder for something. And also these pages are fine to keep and we may need to return to a system like this. So hmm, that's a just in case an item. I am delaying a decision. But I like the binder. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the school closet because I'm going, I have that on my list for spring cleaning to redo the school closet. So I'm going to delay that decluttering decision and pop it up there for now. The reason I'm delaying that decluttering decision is because I don't want it to derail my productivity right now, which is because I'm just trying to be fast and easy to clutter. Did I declutter anything yet? No. 
This is great. The kids are finally putting their shoes where they belong. So this is staying. <laughs> now that right there is next. I am going to make some decisions based off the choices my children make for what they put on their bodies to leave the house. So if they have made those choices recently, they're gonna stay. If they're not, I'm just gonna put them in the donation basket in my laundry room. Vernon. My daughter, Rebecca. All right, three kids spaces. My 10 year old, my nine year old, and my seven year old. And my boys, my, my oldest and my youngest are both boys. They would wear the same coat and be totally fine all winter long, spring, whatever. Uh, my daughter wears a different jacket for every occasion. So she's going to have more choices because she has made more choices. And I'm not gonna get rid of something without her, her permission. And I'm not seeking her permission right now. And I'm also not gonna seek her forgiveness when I let something go without her permission. So for now, more things are gonna stay for her. This is a raincoat. Where's everybody else's raincoat? Love this coat on her. She just doesn't wear it anymore. It's kind of too small anyway. Don't eat. This is too big for her, so I'm going to put it in her too big bin upstairs, which is really improperly labeled. I need to Goldilocks her clothes. I need to make a bin that's too big, too small, and just right, so she has exactly the clothes that she needs for this size of her life. Okay, this is Donate. Go birds, donate. It doesn't really fit anybody anymore. Very heavy duty sweatshirt. I am gonna donate it because he has a fleece that he prefers more than this. Okay, this is, my mom made this for me. It's like a poncho back when I was in my 20s and now we've gifted it to Rebecca to wear and she wears it for church. really lovely and then she has this sweatshirt which is actually her what she calls her gymnastics sweatshirt so I'm gonna put this in her gymnastics bin she doesn't choose this jacket so I'm going to donate it um, does he have a coat yeah both my boys have coats winter coats in the car and I'm gonna go get them because I want to see what this looks like when it's done so this is a donate because it's just, it's an extra jacket that was a hand-me-down from his older brother. A couple other things we had hanging here were bags. This is a, my daughter's purse. She can just have that in our room. I don't even know what's in there. This is an empty bag. This used to be our library bag, which is probably why it was still hanging there. This is just an empty bag. My daughter's backpack, that can go upstairs. And then she also has this backpack, which she was using for gymnastics for a few minutes because she got it as a gift for her birthday. She loved it, uh, but she switched back to her other backpack. So this will go in her room. I have a space in our hall closet for bags, like when we're leaving the house and we need to, you know, carry stuff. So that's where I'm gonna put these. This guy, I'm, he doesn't have that much and he doesn't have a sweatshirt, so I'm just gonna put it here. He loves that sweatshirt, so I'm not gonna make that decision for him. And then we had this bag. <laughs> this is my dogs. This is where I store all the dog stuff. So all of their leashes and then the fanny pack to take them for walks and the flags that go out front each season change. So that's what's in this bag and that works fine for me. Is this lovely basket of tissues and sunglasses. Funny enough, I was looking for these, like a pack of travel tissues the other day. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I'm gonna stick it in the hall, no. I know exactly what to do with it. 
All the places that I've wanted these things have been in my van with the children. Hey, you need a tissue? I wish I had my sunglasses, mommy. Put it in the car, the end. There we go, the after. That looks a lot better. There's less decision making going on for this. The shoes are all the same. We didn't declutter any shoes, but this is my declutter pile right here. These are all the choices. So one, two, three, four, five things that were hanging there. Visual clutter blocking the path for choosing the ones they actually do wear. Gonna be donated. Spot number two is the bathroom. Not usually a lot of emotional or sentimental clutter in the bathroom, so it makes the decision making a little bit easier. I have decluttered my bathroom somewhat recently. I will leave you a link to the video. This is my one-stop drawer, that's what I call it. Everything I need for the day to get ready is in this drawer, including jewelry, hair stuff, any makeup I wear. The only makeup I'm wearing right now is this lip gloss or lipstick that I have in my purse. All the other makeup, I've tried minimal, mineral makeup. All the other makeup like burns my face, specifically my eyes, so I don't use it anymore. I don't really need to declutter the bathroom right now, but nothing on our counters <laughs> makes it easy to clean. And then one-stop shop drawer makes it easy to get ready. And then everything else gets stored in the cabinets for me. So this top drawer is just washcloths and hands, hand towels. bottom drawer <laughs> travel bag I just keep reusing it this is the bottom drawer it probably could use some sort of a container to make sure everything kind of stays in here but I'm not using my hair dryer right now I'm just trying not to create extra frizz as I'm redoing my curls everything else is just not everything I it's just not stuff I need every day I don't even open that cabinet except for the watch cloths if the goal is nothing on the counters and easy to clean, then you just have to make sure everything has a home, a spot. Once you do that, you might end up with a lot of products that you're not using. And you have to either throw them away, give them to a friend. If they're opened, you're not really gonna be able to resell them. You're not gonna get any kind of money back. So you just need to let go of the financial guilt when you've spent money on products you use on your body, your hair, that just didn't work for you and you need to let it go. You just gotta throw it out or you gotta give it away. And the third spot is your linen closet. Again, not usually a lot of emotional or sentimental attachment to the items in a linen closet. Here are the specific things that I'm going to encourage you to focus in on. Your sheets and your towels. The only extra towels I have for a family of five are the two guest towels. <laughs> I don't have extra towels for my family of five. I was just folding towels and putting them back. It was like a rotation that I did not feel like managing anymore. So towels get hung on the hooks behind the door after the shower. And then after I wash and dry them, they go here. I don't fold and put them away anymore. It's just less to have to manage. On the sheets side, every type of bed, twin, full, and king in our house has its own basket and one extra set of sheets. That's it. And right now, the extra, it kind of is almost unnecessary at this point. <laughs> um, I, I wash the bedding for each bed most every week and it just goes back onto their beds. I don't even, I mean, these are probably dusty in here at this point, so I could let go of them. The reason that I don't is because when the flu hits the house and someone has thrown up in their bed, I like an extra set of sheets. That's why I'm hanging on to them. I could probably combo them all into one basket, uh, but this is fine. I am going to declutter something right now out of here. I noticed this. I, don't know, you, I decluttered the linen closet like a year and a half ago, maybe. I hung on to these because I was like, these are so nice. These are the ribbons that come with a sheet set. They've been sitting in there since that day, unused. They're going in the trash. This is a basket that usually has all the extra stuff for toothbrushing for kids. It needs to be restocked because we've been traveling so much. Light bulbs, extra bath mat, 
washcloths, potty wipes, hand towels. They must be in the laundry. <laughs> uh, swim shampoo, tissues, and then paper towels I use to clean the bathroom when I'm in here. Uh, those are just the labels here. My little hooky thingy fell off, so I gotta fix that. Sheets, that's pillowcases, all pillowcases. Extra cleaning stuff that was just purchased so long ago, I'm just powering through that box of cleaning supplies. Because I, I make my own cleaner now. But in the bathroom, this is so much easier. So maybe you keep some cleaning supplies in your linen closet to make it a little bit easier to clean your bathroom. Every time I give my seven-year-old a bath, I clean the bathroom. So two, three times a week, I am in here cleaning and wiping down the kid's bathroom because he doesn't want to be alone in the bathroom. So I just take advantage of that time. And I kept everything in here to make it possible for me to just knock that out in five minutes. Finally throwing these out. <laughs> this feels so good right now. Small little decisions all the time. So I just threw those ribbons away. Small little decisions like that add up over time. In this video, I've talked about that, that small decisions. The first two months of 2024, I was able to, to declutter something every single day by making small decisions all along the way in those months. I hope you're doing well. Watch this video next and thanks for being here with me today.